Magic plays a big part in Disney movies. There are curses, evil enchantresses, magic healing hair. But today, we're going to set the record straight about the different kinds of magic in the Disney universe. from Nostalgia Studios, where we talk about your favorite things from your childhood. And nothing stands out more prominent in my childhood than some good old-fashioned Disney magic. First of all, I'm just going to assume that all the Disney movies take place in the same universe. People have made claims that they do, some people make claims that they don't, but I'm not going to discuss in this video, so for this theory, this video alone, we're just going to assume that they are, okay? Okay. Also, I'm not going to count Pixar movies because I think it clearly exists in a different universe. Sorry, Brave. I'm going to start with the humans or the human-ish people. I think it really comes down to who is just plain magic or who is more of an enchantress. I could think of two good examples of characters that are just plain magic, Rapunzel and Elsa. These people were born with a power that nobody else in the whole Disney universe has or can do. Rapunzel got her magic healing hair from a magic healing golden flower that her mom drank while pregnant with her. Elsa's powers don't have a confirmed origin, though there are definitely theories out there. All in all, it doesn't really matter. We just have to know that both these ladies have a specific power that they could do with just their bodies, as opposed to needing like a wand or a potion or something. The enchantresses, or enchanters, if that's the male counterpart, are people that can do magic, but it's through a spell or a potion or a wand or something. A good example is the evil queen in Snow White, where she used her magic to make a poisonous apple. It didn't work too well. Snow White just got a good nap. Or Maleficent, who curses a spinning wheel spindle to kill Sleeping Beauty when she happens to prick her finger on it. Why a spindle? It didn't work too well. Sleeping Beauty just got a good nap. Or Ursula, who conducts a spell to trade Ariel's voice for a pair of human legs. It didn't work too well. Ariel just got a good husband. I could do this forever. Moving on, enchantresses aren't all villains. A good example is Cinderella's fairy godmother. The fairy godmother uses her wand and a bit of bibbidi bobbidi boo to turn a pumpkin into a carriage and a some rags into a ballroom gown. These are some of the enchantresses I could think of in Disney movies. Yzma, Dr. Facilier, Jafar, the fairies from Sleeping Beauty, Peter Pan, the fairy from Pinocchio, Mary Poppins, if you want to count live action movies, and the Enchantress from Beauty and the Beast. If you could think of any more, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. You might be screaming at your screens right now, what about Moana? That has tons of magic in it. Well, I'm getting there. Moana is based on Polynesian religion with the ability to create life and the manta ray grandma ghost. And it's not magic, because it's something that real people believe is true. I'd put this in the same category as Hercules, where it has to do with, you know, gods and demigods and stuff. Mythology isn't magic, because magic is stuff that's impossible in the real world. But mythology is stuff that a lot of people actually believe is true. Next, when you think of Disney magic, a big player in the magic-making world is the genie from Aladdin. The genie pretty much has his own rules for his magic, different than any other character in all of Disney universe. He could pretty much do anything in the universe possible, but he has to give three wishes to anybody who rubs his lamp. He's not in the two categories of magic that we talked about so far. He's just a non-human entity who can grant wishes, and sing catchy songs. Next are the trolls from Frozen. Most of them aren't magic, or at least we don't see them do magic during the time of the movie, except for Grandpappy. Grandpappy can mend frozen heads, which is a extremely strange and not very useful power. Besides Anna, whose sister is a human ice machine, who else gets their head frozen? I mean, 
Good thing Grand Pappy's one customer is the royal family, because he was probably out of business before Elsa showed up. Anyway, Grand Pappy can heal on this frozen head pretty easily, and also invades and manipulates her memories. But, I mean, it's unclear how the trolls do this, but I think they're just uh, rock creatures with special powers. There is one huge type of magic I haven't talked about yet. Probably the first thing you think of when you hear the words Disney magic, and that is true love's kiss. If you are unfamiliar with this phenomenon, the thing that woke both Sleeping Beauty and Snow White up from their previously mentioned good naps was a kiss from their true loves. You might say, that's not a magical power, that's just a child-friendly way to end an old Disney movie where the female role model doesn't actually do anything while the male saves her. Or, that's just true love. Yes, I would agree, but Disney makes it very clear that love in Disney movies is magic. First, turn to Beauty and the Beast, where Belle's love for the Beast lifts a spell on not only the Beast, but the entire castle. Another example is The Little Mermaid, where Ariel needed a true love, or Eric's kiss, to break Ursula's spell. Also in Frozen, Anna performing an act of true love by saving her sister, mended her frozen heart, which not even the trolls could fix. When you think about it, lots of Disney movies have true love being magic, or being able to fix a curse or a spell or something. Wait a minute, we know that acts of true love, like a true love's kiss, perhaps, can mend a frozen heart. What if the apple in Snow White and the spindle in Sleeping Beauty actually froze the hearts of the princesses? Yes, the reaction is a lot quicker, they don't turn blue, but... The frozen heart is the only thing that we know that gets cured by an act of true love, like a true love's kiss. Also, this magic is being performed by powerful enchantresses, not an anxious teenager who recently decided to stop trying to control her powers, so their spells could probably work a lot faster than Elsa's did. I know this theory is kind of grasping at straws, but it would be pretty cool if it was correct, and maybe, who knows, it'll get explored more in Frozen 2. Well, that's the end of this video. Make sure to like, share, and hit that notification bell. You can subscribe by clicking here, and watch another video on Disney or Pixar by clicking here. Also, comment down below what do you think of this theory, and can you think of any other kinds of magic in the Disney universe? I am sure I missed some. There are just so many examples. See you guys next time. Bye!